very frequently we hear discussion about PAR, which stands for photosynthetically active radiation. This is a way to measure the amount of light usable by plants that is present in any given place, like our aquarium. But what does that mean? What are the PAR of our lights? Well, let's talk about that. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and I got a hold of something very cool that my club has. A PAR meter. Now this is an Apogee Instruments model MQ510, 510, whatever. But this is the PAR meter that my club has that we members can check out. And there's a long list to get onto this thing. I've actually been waiting for this a little bit. Well, you can actually see it's been like adhered to a dowel so it's easy to use in aquariums. It's just a genius little thing to do. But I've put this thing to the test across a lot of lights. And it's interesting to see just exactly how much light we're getting. So let's go into the warm room. Let's go specifically to the running river tank and look at the aqua sky with my custom settings and max power, the fluval plant with day sim and max power versus the JCMP with my custom settings and max power. Let's see several points in the tank, uh, both shaded and direct in the light, exactly how powerful that light is based on the depth of water we're dealing with. I've done a fairly recent uh, water change to that tank, so it's pretty close to the top as far as the lights are concerned, so we're getting maximum light diffraction. And let's see those numbers and then come back and talk about what that really means. So basically, dead front of the tank, this is pretty much under the light. It's between 68 and 70 par. We're gonna come into the shade underneath some of the java fern over here. You see, I'm really not going that far. It's about 11 or 12 par. Come to the side of the tank. Still fairly open, but under some plants, between 24 and 26. And then at water surface, center light, 180 to 186. And I'm going to go back here, where I'm not in direct light at all, but just kind of barely getting light. This is 3 and 4 par. Try center of the tank, out of the light. Again, 3 and 4 par. Far right hand side. Uh, this is So this is getting a little sun, and this is 12 to 14 par. That's right at water surface. Keep that in mind, all this. And then this last reading will come down here in this front corner. Little sun, but not directly under the center of the light. This is at 34 par. All right, so now what we're gonna do is set it to manual mode and max everything. Okay, so this is the aqua sky at maximum power. We'll do the similar readings. So here, dead center. Very similar, about 59 par. Oh, gonna go back here in the shade. <laughs> Yanking stems out. So the shade's a bit different. This is about 12 par. A little bit more light there. A lot more light over here. This is a 45 par. We'll go surface level. Surface water right under the sensor is about 240. It's all right, Rambo. 
about 33 par over in the front corner. And now we'll do all the uh, back setting surface of water, but not directly in the light. So again, about three par, four par, and then the, this back corner gets some sunlight. It's about 10. So you can see the spread's not quite as wide. So let's go ahead and move to the plants and get settings there. Okay, so this is day sim on a flugel plant. And same time of day, all at the high point for both this and the aqua sky. Let's compare the differences. Uh, lights in the same point, which isn't necessarily where I'd put it directly on the tank, but this is for our measuring to make it a little easier. So in the center, brightest lights. With Dacen, keep in mind this is not main power, it's 85 par, dead center. We go into the shallow, the shade here, rather. 20 par, so you can see how much par just that java fern cuts. This far side over here, 63, so quite a lot more, about 50% more than the aqua sky. And over in this corner, we're getting uh, about 45. Uh, let's make sure it's very front-facing, just in case. Yeah, that's a little better. 48. It's getting a little shade from the Java from there. It's growing very, very well. So I'll go center water surface here, just under 320 par. And then this has quite a lot wider spread, but still surface of water. This is part of what's, because of how shallow it is, only 7 par. Center... 12, and then over here in that sun, about 12 as well. So the real question would be, if we put the flu ball at max, okay, so this is a flu ball 3.0 plant at max power. Let's get readings there. Now keep in mind, this is not the apex of day sim anymore. This is everything at 100%. Pulling 90 par in the open, in the shade under the java fern, 24 par, Oop. far left, open, 70 par, far right, open, 35 par, interesting, interesting how that number is, at surface, Get this right. Similar, about 340 par, just a little bit higher. And and that's going to be different. I'm wiggling my arm a little bit here. I can't be perfect. So our back, not direct light. Same par as before. Just making sure there's no difference. Again, 10 to 12 over here. And 10 to 12 again. So the big difference is that center. So let's compare the JCMP now and see how JCMP stacks up to these two lights in par. Here's my custom setting for JCMP. This is the one in the final review of the JCMP that I said was the setting I like the most that I use on a Wi-Fi timer. So in the center here, we got about 75 par in our shady spot. 14. Over here on the left, 50. The right, 40. At surface, two twenty. And then in the back corners. A six par, dead center, 10. <laughs> Very similar. I mean, it's surface of water, so it's still going to do so much. And about 10. Now, I guess if we, we could bury down right in the back here, get the cable will work with me, Sam. 
to get readings like this. The problem is there's so much plant growth that a lot of that's going to get shaded out. But you can get an idea what these settings are like and just how much power these lights are putting out. Set center, 83 par. That's strong. Powerful for a cheap light. In the shade, 14 par. Left side, 57 par. Right side, 40 par. At surface, 270. And then again, we'll go, how did we move that? <laughs> I put the flu ball a little too far, it's blocking my spot. There we go. So again, surface of water over here, eight par in the center, 12 par. And we got another 10 par back there in the corner that gets a little sun. Now if we're curious, the guppy mansion, yeah, I'm just gonna whip this camera, get ready. Right? You can tell I, I definitely don't have this set up for filming. It's all got stuff on it, but this also has a little plan on it. Let me center it. Running day sim. I just want to show day sim at a different depth. So this is a much deeper tank. You see all the guppies swarming there wanting food. <laughs> Been fed. We want more. But now. We're a little obscured even here. There we go. Out in the clear, all the way down, this is a 24 inch tank. And it's not dead center of the light, it's a little off the center, but you're getting some shade basically because our floating plants, nine par. But you can see how well stuff grows in this tank. It overgrows. Then if we get about halfway up, got this. Try not to get these plants to shade it. But, you know, here's half depth on day sim, and it's about 30. That's with some floating plants and going through a piece of acrylic. But this gives you some ideas of, you know, a base PAR reading and maybe our association with PAR these plants off isn't exactly the same. So let's try one more light. So we're going to do the Centani Ensis tank real fast. I got another 40 breeder. This is under two fluorescent tube lights. And they're older ones, so they're not great. But let's just see in the open how much par that produces. 21. <laughs> so two fluorescent tubes in a 40 breeder. 21 par. If we come over here where we got a bunch of plant life, so we'll get shaded, right? All the way down to the substrate layer. Six. And then at surface, we'll go kind of over here so we're under the lights more. I want to get more center of the tank. At surface, we're at ha, 35. Oh, that's not surface. Hold on, there we go. Again, actually very similar. 37. So not a ton, right? Gives us an idea. Let's go back, talk about what we're looking at and why this matters. Well, there you go. There's the numbers. There's the math. Now, when we look at PAR normally, we would argue that every one of those settings at substrate layer is medium light. Typically, in order to get to high light, right, uh, we want to get basically over 100 par at the substrate, not at the surface. So there's several powerful lights out there. Now, mind you, you can get a lot more light out of these lights. But you need everything out of the way. You need basically a barren tank with nothing there. Uh, season tanks will eventually, over time, you got plant growth, little bits of shade. It reduces some of the light long term. However, we, we look at those and we see good light, healthy plant growth. We've seen 
the flu ball planter, especially on a ton of my different tanks, the JCMP also has been used in several places. And we know that they can grow plants well. So what, what does it really mean? Unless you're growing really crazy, complicated plants, you don't need as much light as you might think you need. Often, we put way more light with those super powerful lights out than our plants ever need. Now, if you're trying to do hyper red plants, right, the, the super dark red coloration that some plants get that they don't normally show is basically like how they protect themselves from excessive sun radiation. It's like when our skin gets a sunburn uh, or more like a tan. Think of it like a tan, <laughs> not a burn, but it can be a burn. That's They'll start to die in that case. But think of it like when you tan, that hyper red coloration and some of your otalas and stuff like that is like when we go and get a tan, right? It's how our skin reacts to protect ourselves from too much sunlight. The normal coloration, that green, is what we should, in theory, see in most healthy plants. And some plants have variations of color and naturally have more red than others. Yes, of course. <laughs> but when we put them to the test with these lights with an actual PAR meter, you actually don't need that much to get extremely healthy, robust growth. I mean, you can see this tank behind me, this massive java fern. We've got big crypts. We've got all sorts of stuff that's been doing very, very well in this tank. As long as the plecos and coris don't knock it all over the place. And it's not a lot of light. This is actually on a lower setting than my standard day sim, because if I put too much light on it, I will have issues and these plants will struggle. The key here is this. No matter what the par of a light is, that doesn't necessarily matter. It only matters in the case in which we're trying to really push certain things are a tank, or we have very, very, very high demand plants, which are not common. Very rarely are plants that demanding, unless you're like a super rare plant collector, right? What matters is this, understanding the difference between how much light we can get versus how much light the plants actually need. If we're doing low demand, java ferns, anubias, boosts, crypts, you can go on for a long list. Actually, a lot of plants don't need as much light as we probably are throwing at them. You don't need 100 par. You don't need 60 par. You can have 20 par, and they'll be better growth, more robust, more child plants than you've ever seen at 60 par. Because that's what they prefer. It's about understanding what your plants want. And this isn't necessarily uh, supposed to be a guide to be like, how you're doing it wrong. It's more that there's a common conception of, oh, that light only gets so much par, it must not be very good. That's not the case. Many of our lights don't need to be extremely bright. Think about for years, people use fluorescent tubes. And there's more powerful versions than what I use that you would use for growing stuff. Do not get me wrong. It's not like that is the perfect example. But those old fluorescent tubes are growing a ton of Val and a massive, massive mother java fern needle leaf plant. No problem whatsoever. And there, I honestly go like a couple days where I forget to turn that thing on in the morning. I'm running out the door. I'm feeding fish. And it's the summer. There's plenty of ambient light. I don't need to turn it on. I'll just run out the door. Plants are doing fine. It's about understanding how much light our plants actually need in our setup and balancing the full equation of things. Light, nutrients, CO2. That's it, guys. I just wanted to, like a short little dive into actual par ratings on a tank that you guys have seen me do tons of testing with. It's even a tank that gets a little bit of CO2, so... In theory, it can handle even more light, but you'll notice we have all this really robust growth with not that much light. And this is done at middle of the day. It's basically, uh, let me get the time, right? When I filmed all this stuff, uh, it was about an hour ago. So 1 p.m. 1 p.m. in Seattle on a bright, sunny summer day. And those are our par readings. We don't need as much light as we might think we do. We need the right amount of light. Let me know if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Um, 
I'd love to long term do significantly more testing. When I get an opportunity, I'm going to do a much wider swath of lights uh, tested in bare bottom tanks on a par meter like this at different depths. That's going to have to wait, though. I have to get this bad boy back to my club because somebody else needs to use it. They want to check the light in their tank. If you enjoy videos like this one, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you find interesting about it. Are you surprised by how low the numbers are, how high the numbers are? Uh, you're probably going to think they're lower than they should be, but let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. You guys know I love talking to you in the comments. If you enjoy this video, do the usual YouTube thing. Like. Comment subscribe right all that stupid youtube beggarino stuff uh and then for for those of you who just really appreciate this kind of stuff maybe consider becoming a member get access to a few additional perks members only discord is uh a cool and very calm little community where we have all sorts of good conversations it's kind of like the private bat, bat phone directly to me yours truly so if you're interested in something like that consider becoming a member as always guys Thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.